this um, is at the same time, SEQ is a type al alias for um, the sequence monad. I don't, I forgot the full name of it. I think it's sequence, but I'm not sure. And then this opening brace and until the closing brace um, is the code for the monad. Um, this sequence um, goes to a sequence builder which implements the monad, which implements this bind function, this delay function, this return function, and it gets uh, and the F# -sharp compiler will um, separate out this um, code which is uh, between this opening brace and closing uh, brace, separate it out in calls to for and yield in return and so on. And the sequence builder then only has to return the correct lambda functions or the correct functions which are fixed or the correct values for what it wants to do. And in this case, this sequence is um, one of the built-in types. It is a lazy sequence. It is, um, well, it represents the creation of a sequence like uh, sequence expressions or generator functions more or less. In Python they are called generators. Um, this is exactly the same thing. Um, and yield is one of these um, monad expressions, uh, these monad keywords, it's only available within a monad, which more or less means, um, well, if you come here, then return that value upwards, but I will continue. <laughs> and, well, the sequence expression itself I won't explain so much because um, I think it is uh, is to read for e from zero in two steps up to a hundred yield, yeah, the double of it, and convert to a float. Sorry, I have to interrupt with questions again. <laughs> um, so here we have a C style class. Do we really use the colon graders operator? I think, um, yeah, for only for interfaces, and this here is for types. Is this correct? That's correct. Yes. Okay. Um, this uh, column arrow is the upcast, column question mark arrow is the downcast, which can fail with um, an exception, okay. or return, no, return null. And um, this C style cast, as you called it, yes, this is for um, primitive types. Okay. I Actually, I don't know if you could use this cast also for the interfaces. I never tried it out. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, what does uh, this? What is the type of this A? It's sequence of float. Okay. It's like the I/O monad. Once a thing is tainted, everything is tainted. We here have a list of floats, and now it's tainted as sequence which, by the way, uh, translates one-to-one -to, -one to the i enumeral um, type of c -sharp. Mm. And now, because it's only a lazy list, because it only represents a computation, we do not have the values yet. So if you would to have any um, side effect in here, it would not ha have yet occurred. But array, for instance, array of sequence would then um, actively execute this computation and then it would go through the sequence and at the end we would have an array of type load which has the squares of all the integers from 0 to 100 in step 2. It looks like two list in link in CGI. Yes, <laughs> it's uh, the same function. Um, did I get it correct that monads are also take also some input values? So some kind of arguments. So is it possible that um, I don't know after the SE, SEQ statement, for example, um, I can put some argument and use that within the monad through closures. Through closures. And so so okay. monads automatically make a closure. Okay. For those who don't know, a closure is uh, when uh, expression in a language captures the variables which are at the outer lexical scope of that expression. So if, hmm, okay, now I cannot jump 20 at once. 
um, when I showed you before the type constructor as a function. And the type constructor had a message parameter of type string. Then um, from like if you would see it and don't know about the .NET object system, then you would say uh, that my foo implementation, which then returned this message from the constructor, would be a closure. Uh, that this would be a closure because it uses the message parameter from the outer constructor function. And uh, well, the same um, is here. So this is of course uh, quite important. Uh, there is, um, we will soon go to it, then you will even see it, I hope. Ah, yeah, we have an async monad. Yes, this was, by the way, one of the first monads that existed. And before they were uh, generically supported with F-sharp 3.0, it was hard-coded in the compiler. But, um, well, F-sharp was the first language on .NET which had a really cool way of asynchronous programming by using this monad. Yeah, it was a long... Really cool and then Kumpel hat alles Ja. Ja, dann. Immer noch nicht die Syntax von Haus. Aber Monats was. Ja, hoffentlich. Das kannst du nichts damit tun. So, um, what does this do? Async um, more or less um, introduces. It works like any normal um, F sharp expression. The only difference in async is that you um, implement uh, that it implements this let um, she bang, uh, not she bang, uh, let bang, and also a use bang and also a return bang, um, which uh, can take the async another async monad and wait until its value um, is there. So what would this be? Do this represent, uh, represents a computation which uh, creates a web request to that URL, and then I make an async get here. And then I say, okay, you scream, and I read it out, and so on. And I would then call async, http get, http livecom, googlecom. And then I have, of course, because monads are not yet executed, but they represent computations, you can still combine them, you can still do anything with them, more or less. Um, then I say, okay, let's take these two, uh, two uh, take these two com um, okay. Take these two computations and let's run them in parallel, independent of each other. And then, um, well, you could this of course you could return this parallelized version to the outer function, or you could actually execute it. And execution is done with async.run synchronously on this thread, or with async.start, where it only starts the execution and does not wait for the result. Now, what happens in the background, by the way, because asynchronous programming, where it just eats threads, is not really asynchronous programming, because you get a nicer syntax, but you still have the bad uh, performance and memory use implications. Of course, um, at the end, .NET, the virtual machine, has its own I.O. threads, and all the I.O. functions in .NET have um, asynchronous versions of it. Um, usually they always have a begin and end. They have, there are different kinds of async interfaces in .NET because every one and a half years they defined a new async interface because now we really got it right. Yes. Um, but at somewhere at the end there is this basic I.O. function uh, which um, calls the win sys call in an asynchronous fashion and has some kind of event which is then triggered and then sets the monad or sets this uh, result to be there. And so this really, you can really use this to well run 1000 requests on one IO thread. And you don't have to give a fuck. And how does this look like with, with proper error handling? So for example, uh, uh, checking if some request uh, takes longer than 30 seconds um, I haven't uh, here an example, but um, async of course has support for timeouts. Async has of course support for uh, cooperative cancellation, and it of course has also support for um, migrating exceptions. So if 
uh, it's cancelled, then the monad during its execution will throw this cancelled exception, which really goes back to the uh, lowest um, blocking call. So really the lowest blocking call will really get cancelled with operating system support, where it's necessary and not if it's not, of course. And if it's, uh, there's a timeout, then this cancellation token will uh, cancel be a, through a timeout and the timeout exception goes outwards. If the call itself fails, it will have an exception and this exception will propagate outwards so that really async HTTP get then would throw that exception. It should be a cancel exception, a timeout exception or any other exception if it would occur in the code. Um, it is, as far as I know, not possible to, or not in the base library for automatic restarts or something like that. But I think it should be, depending on what you need, the basics should be easy to write oneself. Of course, you won't get full scale. And, and who is catching the exceptions in this case? You have two async HTTP gets in yeah. async parallel, but he, um, can this thing return an exception and still run? Uh, no. Because one one HTTP get is still running and running successfully, the and one is uh, one is throwing an exception. Um, you can configure the behavior through arguments. The default behavior is if one of the parallelly executed um, async monads is from an exception, this exception is thrown outwards, and the others are cancelled. So in the in the end, you can't use it for anything network related. Yeah, I just said that is the default setting. Okay, um, you can get, for example, one or two, one exception and one uh, async uh, HTTP get uh, running successfully. Um, there is, oh, tell us, there is a mechanism for that, yes. But I have to admit that the most convenient syntax won't do it that way. Um, it's not in my slides for today because I really am already finished since half an hour. Um, but basically it's quite easy in F-sharp to do uh, type extensions. So basically one uh, could easily extend this async with a different kind of parallel where you would for instance say, um, don't know, parallel 2, <laughs> no, uh, don't know, or that you could uh, for instance make for, for example, uh, uh, catching all the statistics, how long did it take, how much traffic did it gener generate, uh, the errors. You would write this as your own async model and then the async type uh, to have this available directly. And then you would just type it into async dot do cool stuff. But yes, it's <laughs> not there in the default library. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I never said it would be perfect. <laughs> you said you can do 1000 HTTP gets. <laughs> With a little bit of luck, okay? It's spooked to me already. It's spooked to me already. So, now, um, auf welcher Nummer sind wir denn übrigens? Um, magst du kurz auf die Seite gehen? Auf Nummer 40 von 63. Okay. Um, <lacht> I take a two minute break. Okay? Ja, man macht mir vielleicht die Tiere ein bisschen auf, weil nachdem so viele Leute da sind, ist das vermutlich, wenn man da draußen reinkommt. Another monad that is very important and quite often used in practice. It is the query monad. What does the query do? Um, I, I have shown. Well, let's start with what I have written up there. Implementing the F-sharp version of C-sharp's link requires an F-sharp library. Okay, um, link in .NET is an extension that Microsoft implemented primarily targeting C-sharp, but available for all of .NET. And it says language integrated query, and it makes um, SQL style queries conveniently available in .NET languages. It does this uh, by doing two things. Three things. The first is it defines a few interfaces of stuff that can be iterated over or queried. It defines a few static functions, static methods, 
um, which perform such queries on any kind of collections.